celebration game. Oh. You Hello everybody, we are in uh, Swingfield today, it's the European Final 2016, it will be an exciting day today and we have a few, a few Dutch guys who are really on the move, but what about James Shanes? Maybe, maybe, we will see today, it will be a hard, tough race, but we have beautiful weather and a beautiful racing field. Have fun with the video. Um, the track's 680 meters, so it's quite a big one, um, a lot bigger than a, a speedway track. Um, and the speeds are probably between sort of 65 and 70 miles an hour, um, maybe higher depending on how, how good the rider is. 
And how many riders do we have entering the championship today? Um, we've got 18 um, in the championship and obviously two reserves. Um, and yeah, it's obviously, I think the majority of the riders come from England. Um, there's one from Germany and a few from Czech, some from France and a couple from Holland. So it should be sort of fiercely competitive. And, and the rough, they, they, they do certain heats and then semis and then into the finals, is that correct? You've got four qualifying races um, and then the top, uh, I think it's top, top 12 into the semi-finals and then the top three from each fi uh, into the final. So it should be pretty, yeah, exciting. Okay. Sorry, what makes a really good grass track race? Um, probably the track. It's got to be big and smooth and consistent. Um, and obviously the riders putting on the show. Um, as long as the, the track's sort of raceable and looked after, not too much dust, not too much grip. Um, it's normally pretty exciting. <laughs> One of the biggest meetings you can do. Um, are we qualified first off through the um, European semi, which was in my round was in Mulsaw, and they have two rounds. I went through Mulsaw and I got third there. Um, and then obviously today is the big final. It's all on the final, so you can win all the races and get to the final and come last. So it's, it's a scary thing saying that way, but it's all it's all good. It's all down the road and hard. It's going to be back, you know, amazing racing. You've got some of the world's best riders here. Um, and me, so hopefully I can do it in front of the home crowd would be brilliant for me. Yeah. How much fun is it riding a bike like this? You can't describe it, it is the best feeling in the world. You, you know, I, I wake up you know, so excited to ride a bike, it's unbelievable. I don't enjoy washing the bike afterwards, but you know, throwing your leg over it and going out there and doing you know, 80 mile an hour, no brakes, just flat out all the way is brilliant. You know, there's no computers on the bikes, it's you and the bike and that's it. You've got no, you know, I haven't got like daddy out like, in the pit saying, all right, do this, do that. Oh, when I'm out there, it's me on my own, me and my bike, and that's it. Do you prefer this? Have you, have you done Speedway? Yeah, I, at the moment, I ride for Kent at the moment on Speedway. Oh, right. So, so um, they, they yeah. are two quite similar disciplines, but yet they are. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're very similar, but very like very different. Obviously, like the bikes are very similar, but again, quite different in different ways. Um, speed is the big difference. You know, around a speedway track, you could hit like 60 miles an hour, and around you know around some of the big long tracks, you can do 100 plus. So it's you know, the speed side is sometimes quite difficult to get, you know, change from going from like big thousand metre tracks down to a 400 metre, 400 metre track and grip levels are quite different, but other than that, they're uh, very similar. What's your sort of strategy today? Because obviously you're chasing Yannick uh, and you're British champion. Yeah. Um, it's a lot, quite a lot on your shoulders in a, in a way, so yeah. does that, has that added a little bit of pressure to you? A little bit, but not a lot, because also I came here I came last year at the European final, I was the underdog, no one's expected anything and I walked out second at the end of that day. Um, and also come here today, Yannick scored all the pressure on his shoulders, he's reigning champion and if he wins it again he'll be the only one to win it four times in a row. So he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders, there's um, Matthias Treasury who's in the World Long Track Series, who's a very top rider, um, Dirt for Brooks is a very good rider as well, so you know, there's that added pressure being obviously at the home, like. In, the, you know, in England and there's a lot of people here that I know so there's added pressure with that but other than that it's just another meeting I'm still kind of the underdog I'm still learning every every time I go out so hopefully just get it all set up for the final and then make the gate in the final and go. Where, where do you sort of see I mean obviously winning this one and going on to the long track and wheel do you, do you see quite a long future in, in grass yeah. tracking or do you think you might switch? Um, there's no reason why I can't do both that's that's the big thing um, there's plenty of riders that do both um, to what varying levels, you know, but 
I'm hoping I can try and make this my um, like my career, my job, and you know, there is why I can have you know, like bombers do and play on the speedway and come in and have a little have a little skill on the grass and then off to speedway and carry on. <laughs> Uh, the first thing is to get in the final and uh, yeah, just go to the races, make sure I get some, some of my starts going well and uh, I think that's the main thing you have to do here, get off, off the line and make sure in, you're in front in the first, first bend and then try to, to, to ride the best line possible, make, the, make enough speed and, and keep in the front. But, um, yeah, it's 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 not easy today. We have a lot of quick quick young guys uh, from all over Europe who uh, who of course want to beat me. So uh, yeah, it will be exciting today. What about conditions? Are they good conditions for racing? I think so. Yeah, the the sun's out, of course, which is always nice. Not just for us, also for the spectators. And um, yeah, I think conditions are uh, the best as they can be uh, right now. Uh, the tracks, of course, developing quite a lot. Uh, in the first practice, it was really wet and slick, and it's it's drying up a bit more. And I think after the the, the support classes will have done the practice, um, they will do some track grading, so it'll change again. So uh, you really have to to look look at the track and see what's happening, and uh, make sure that the bike's set up uh, properly to to uh, well be quick enough on the track, but. Uh, yeah, all you have to do today is first, of, of course, you have to make the final, and it's just one heat you need to win. That's the final, so uh, that's the main strategy. What is it about grass tracking that you that you like, say, over speedway or other traditional bikes? Uh, well, of course, uh, speedway is uh, it's it's a little bit shorter, uh, and, but yeah, I just like the speed, and you really you really have to work hard on. Uh, on a grass track bike and uh, I think you need a bit more uh, strength as well and uh, well the, 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 I think the best thing for me uh, right now at the moment is yeah, I have a normal daytime job during the week and in the weekends I can go racing so uh, yeah that's that's the thing that the, the most positive thing about the grass tracking you know it's a lot of guys that, that aren't really professionals but they of course approach this as, as professional as they can, and uh, yeah, it's an exciting sport. How hard is it? You're a champion, world champion, and, and everybody wants to get you. Is it harder to remain at the top? Yes, it really is. Catch? It is. It's it's hard to catch it, but it's also hard to stay where you, where you are. And of course, a lot of people expect uh, quite quite some things from you because. Yeah, of course you've you've done it in the past, but uh, yeah, it's 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 still a sport, you know, uh, and it's it's never easy. So uh, you can't rest and and, uh, and lay on your on your backside and uh, and do nothing. You have to keep working, and of course sometimes you have some bad luck, and uh, it's also a mechanical sport, so uh, something can go wrong technically with with the bikes or. or you can fall off and break something, which and the, the, those are all uh, the risks from from the sport. And uh, I think the main thing is uh, you just have to have have fun and keep having fun. You know, it, it it's it's still uh, um, yeah, it's still a, a hobby, but uh, yeah, it's 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 quite a professional hobby. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, if you're not having fun anymore doing it. It, it's it's getting it's becoming a drag and, and it's not, it's not because you want it it's because you have to and, and uh, that's that's I think is the most important to keep enjoying the sport and that that makes you win races I think. That's all right. 
I don't mind. You are? This sport, grass track, you're an individual, we all get on very well. Whereas speedway, there's a lot of pressure on you because you're in a team. If you're not performing, you feel like you're letting the team down. The management get on your back a little bit. The fans kind of give you a bit of a hard time because you're not, you're not scoring the points. Whereas grass track, if you have a bad meeting, you've only got yourself to blame, you've only got yourself to have a go at, and then you get over it and ride the next week. You know, and it is also, there isn't a the pressure where you have to ride, like you could be at Edinburgh one night, you could be at um, Kingsley the next night, you could be at Sheffield the next night on the speedway, whereas the grass track, if it's not going well, you can maybe have a week or two off and just regroup and then go and do another meeting and, and it just gives you, it's a lot more, a lot more freedom I think in grass track and it is a lot more relaxed and the, the pits are a lot more relaxed, you can see, you see for yourself, everyone's wandering around and chatting and uh, it's just a lot more relaxed atmosphere and you've got all day to do it whereas speedway is bang 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 all go uh, whereas grass track you've got a nice relaxed day and you can enjoy it more who are the players to watch oh the the the, the, world, the current world champion Yannick de Jong and European champion he's uh, he's a very good good candy rider obviously uh, he's a dutch kid uh, about 28 and he's uh, he's going to be the force to reckon with but we've also got a young english rider James Shane who's uh, He's doing well. He's setting the world on fire at the moment. He came second in the, in the European final last year. His first year at it. He thinks he's qualified for the World Long Track next year. He's British Masters champion two years running. So he's going to be uh, definitely one to, to watch as well. But to be fair, it's a European final. There's probably ten guys who could win it. You know, it's what if if, if it goes right today, it, it, it could be anyone's. You know, There's, there isn't one standout guy I don't think today. So it's going to make it tough. <laughs> Right, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. Uh, you've been out for practice today, Colin. Everything gone okay? Yeah, yeah. Everything, uh, everything's good. We've come back in and uh, changed the gear in, but uh, other than that, everything seems all right. Fantastic. I thought you were going to lose your passenger last week. He was doing solo racing. Uh, yeah, I've only just found that out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he won't get the sack. Not yet. Fantastic. <laughs> End of the season. Uh, end of the season, right. <laughs> We'd have to pay you more money, Colin, won't you? So it seems. That's right. Come closer, uh, Carl, and uh, back with Colin this week. Could you not bring, um, when you do an ordinary meeting, bring the solo bike as well? I'm sure Colin would let you. I think I'm getting a bit old for that. <laughs> Used to do it many years ago, but I don't think I could do it now. Well, you did okay at Bridgewater. Yeah, I'm, no, I mean, like, doing uh, solo and cycle at the same meeting. Uh, especially at the moment, I'm, <laughs> no, I don't think I could do it. Um, were you disappointed, uh, Colin, to uh, lose the crown there at the Masters? Uh, well, yeah, obviously, um, but uh, you know, it, um, things happened, didn't it? We um, we bogged it on the start line, and and that's it. It was, you know, good night. You can't uh, you can't do that and make ground up at um, you know a meeting of that caliber in the final. 
That's right. Well, uh, ready. Ne next year, of course, you'll be gunning for glory again. Oh yeah, without doubt, we'll uh, yeah we'll be uh, after it back next year, but. Um, yeah, see what happens. I we've still got a passenger. With Carl <laughs> <laughs> Pugh. That's it. That's if you've got a passenger. You say, oh. okay. There's probably someone I don't know here, isn't there? <laughs> there? There'll be a lot of people coming up to Colin now and saying, I'll passenger for you if Carl's are giving up. <laughs> Is that right? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Not too bad. Um, we haven't really done loads this year, to be honest with you. Um, we've we've tried to just do the, the, the bigger meetings of them all, um, just with work commitments. Really, um, been really busy and trying to fit it all in. It's, it's just been a bit hard sometimes. But um, obviously, uh, Graham here today, he, he does a brilliant meeting, and so you wouldn't want to miss this one, really. You got different passengers today, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I had um, um, Kevin done a um, uh, London to Paris last week cycle ride. Uh, so um, he's um, obviously 300 mile in two days or three days, something silly. <laughs> and uh, how did you get on with the new passenger? Yeah, good. Um, so I, I didn't really know till last night, and he was feeling a bit tired. Kevin was so. Um, um, obviously Liam stepped in for me today um, and he's he's a very experienced passenger very very so there wouldn't be there wouldn't be much um, Liam wouldn't know really about the sport so um, I, I feel good with him on no problem fantastic have a good day hope so thank, thank you very much thank you miles Stand please for the national anthem of Great Britain. And first of all, we have the Vice President of the FIME, Mr. Uni Halmi from Finland. Show your appreciation, everybody. The FIM Europe Jury President, Mr. Peter Szymanski. Now, today's uh, referee, you may have heard of him, of course, on the Speedway Grand Prix, it's uh, Wojciech Gradiski. And of course, uh, from here, from the UK, the FIM jury member and ACU host delegate, Mr. Dickie Staff. Today's ACU clerk of the course is Mr. Paul Hurry. <laughs> and the ACU environmental officer is Mr. Tony Knoll. And so we also have some other officials here. You may remember him as a rider, Zdenek Schneiderwein. And of course, uh, no stranger to the grass tracks, ACU delegate, Mick Stays. The DM SB delegate, Mr. Martin Stuckey. And the KNMV delegate, 
also well-known commentator Jacob, Jacob Alkima. Now we've got, uh, we've got here, we've got uh, Jamie Etherington and Sunny Springer on these youth bikes. Can we have a big round of applause please? This is the future of grass track ladies and gentlemen. They're just receiving their, their medal. So we now move along to the riders. Uh, they're actually grouped in country, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, we have number one, Heinrich Stickhauer. This is the Czech Republic, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, Pepe Joseph Frank. Number ten, Martin Malek. Moving along then to France. Riding at number five, Theo Di Palma. And at number 18, Matthew Trezero. Now for, for Germany, we only have one lone rider from Germany. It's Christian Holzhorst. We move along then to Holland. And we have a very large contingent here from Holland. We have number three, Dirk Fabrik. He's number three. Number seven is Mark Helmut. At number eight, Sword Rosenberg. And now we come to number nine, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning world long track champion, the reigning European grass track champion. Please welcome back to the UK, Yannick de Jong. So we now move, of course, to the UK. Sorry, no, we have another gentleman from Holland because we have Lars Sandevilt. Now, we spoke to him earlier, just 17 years old, one of the future stars of racing in Holland, Romano Hummel. And we also have the very experienced rider here, number 17, Henry van der Steen. Now we come to the UK. He's won this title before, also a Masters champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Appleton. You can make as much noise as you want, everybody. You don't have to be quiet here at Swingfield. You can really let it rip. We've also got number 11, Mitch Gobbin. We now move along, of course, Mitch has come into it, he was a uh, reserve, so too is the next gentleman, he's come into the championship. Please welcome, he won the International Lincolnshire Poacher recently, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Cooper. Now we go along, uh, make our way along to number 14. He was, do you realise he was in Germany racing yesterday? He's here today with us. He's multi-British speedway champion. He actually won the British Under-21 Championship here at an Astra, not this particular venue, but an Astra meeting way back in 2003. Welcome back onto the grass for Chris Bomber Harris. Now we come to a young man who finished second in Europe last year. He won the British Masters for a second time just the other week. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause, please, for James Shanes. And we come along to our next rider. This young man has made rapid progress. I watched him on the speedway the other night at Swindon Speedway. He's making a name for himself on the speedway and on the grass from the Forest of Dean, Callum Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, the riders will now be doing a slow lap, so can you all show your appreciation as they come around, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
Roman Hammer is arriving in fourth place at the moment, but the gaps have really started working out. Aaron Bell and Steve Bell. 
put that in the bin? Uh, 55, Dave Cavell, 65, <laughs> Natasha Bartlett and Kyra Southgate. So we'll wait for the 500 sidecars to get underway. See the... Uh, they start on track, the same as the 500 European solos, and, uh, and a few of the uh, passengers deciding to clear out the loose dirt in the ruts that have been formed already. First time out this afternoon for the 500 side cars. Start is just about to move away. Happy with things? Yep, they're happy. Up go the times and indeed we've got a very high, all sorts of problems on that start line. Into that uh, pit turn on the entrance of the bend, and he's to get through. No. 
Eloy kicks the car around, he's gone slightly wide, but he does just enough. Matt Ramona gets second. So maximum points to Eloy and Jason Farwell. So, race five, and it's the first out in 4,000cc sidecars, and an excellent win to start the day for number 12, Millerin, and Jason Carwell. Second to him, number 15, Matt Pomerola and Gareth Williams. Third place there, number 76, and that of course is Simon Beanie and Gareth Bremister. The winning time was 129.8, 129.80. You should have had 12, 15, 76 and a 129, 80 finishing time. So the start of just checking that it is going to be three riders only going this one. Calls them to the tapes. And away we go, he's made the best of it, Dave Cavell on the outside, he's got that outside line, but what's Josh Goodwin on the inside? He's got a very quick line into that first turn, now remember Dave Cavell had a much wider line going around that first bend, he should be able to cut back going on the back stretch. Now past me for the first time, and it is Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown that lead from Dave Cavell. And Cameron Gordon, Natasha and Kira are still sitting there in that third place. They're not losing ground on that second spot, so we could see a challenge here. Mm -hmm. He goes very quickly around that top turn. He holds a very good line on that top turn. The other outfits are a lot tighter than he is, but he's very, very quick. Again, those of you who are on that bottom turn, you probably see the different lines they're taking on the FD's connection. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -hm
Two outfits getting away from the rest of the field as they come round off that first turn. It is Mark Cossa and the car Blythe that lead. From Colin Blackburn in second place is a good battle going on for that third, fourth and fifth. The three outfits are almost together going into that top bend.
So race four, let's give you the uh, points for that one. We start from the very top, the rider in white scores three points, Henning Sticker. In red, the rider in red, maximum five points once again for Dirt Fabric. In green, number one, Sigurd Rosenberg, one point. Number ten, Martin Malek, no score. Number fifteen, Romano Hummel, four points. And the rider in blue, Henry Van Der Steen, two points. Now, I'm sure you will carry over your progressive totals, but what we do is we'll confirm all those for you once we've had all three of these heats, because we quickly move on to race five in your program, and we see out for the second time. Christian Holt draws a disappointing ride first time out. Ian Palmer, Robert Patio, and uh, we hope that he can get these sorted. Yannick Dijon, you remember, he lies in green this time. He's the defending champion, and he had a win first time out. Number 12, Will Cooper, just got picked by Yannick last time out. He goes once again, the rider in blue. Mark Vanderbilt goes in black and white. And James Shane, who also had problems first time out, right on the inside, is the rider in red. I'm sure sitting in the pit box, they saw Dirk Fabric have a terrific start from that inside gate. Can James Shane do exactly the same thing? He's got some very quick riders on the outside of him. Not these poor people right next to it. He had a terrific start first time out. Now he's marking for that last rider, Yannick Jong, coming to the line. Look for him, he's the rider in the green helmet colour. Ride it to number nine. Right, so on the pace down, but we get underway, we made the best of it. As we go into that first turn, I can see that we've got riders going round the outside, the long way around, James Shane's is right on the inside. The problems on that first turn. And I can see that it is James Shane's has got himself to the front and comes down, leaving the pack. The pack really closing up on him. Now oh, Paul Cooper is a rider in blue and you see going a long way round, he's got two riders in front of him and that's second and third place. Paul Cooper sitting there in fourth place at the moment. He's got the rider in green, Yannick Gion, who's got no answer to James Shane's at the moment. Yannick's still sitting there in second. Paul Cooper's now got himself into that third. Trying to stay on the back tails of...
wrong, and I absolutely fall in. Hey,